Dr. Orlando here with a video on DNA synthesis. These are the uh, pop beads that we use in lab. So just going to go over what's what here. The reds and the whites represent the phosphates and the sugars. And then the colorful uh, ones in the middle represent the bases. You can see that there is some pairing with the blue and the green pairing and the orange and the yellow pairing. The blue and the green represent uh, and uh, guanine and cytosine, and the orange and the yellow represent um, adenine and thymine. Okay, so let's look at how these strands are oriented. Okay, so the white ones represent our sugars, deoxyribose. And remember with deoxyribose, it's very important that uh, we know where our carbons are, know our numbers of our carbon. So on this model, the knob that's pointing up uh, represents the three prime carbon, whereas the little dent in the bottom, the hole in the bottom, represents the five prime carbon. So we have to keep that orientation um, in our minds. Okay, so when we look at our strand here, notice that this deoxyribose here has the knob uh, up, Okay, it's got a phosphate attached to that three prime position at the moment. And so if we see that, we see that we go from three prime on that side all the way down here to this sugar here that ends with a five prime. So we say that this is our three prime to five prime side. Okay, this side right here. All right, and then this side you can see that there's a five prime up. So the little dent is up and the knob is down. So this goes five prime to three prime. Okay, it's important that you know that because we know the DNA polymerase has some rules on how it likes to work. Okay, so now you can see that I've unzipped the two strands of DNA, and I didn't do it, helicase did it. This is the enzyme that's going to move along and uh, open, uh, separate the two strands. Okay, when it does this, uh, it's moving in a particular direction, and it will continue unzipping until it runs off the end of the DNA, DNA molecule or until uh, it uh, runs into another area that has already been opened. Okay, once it has uh, unzipped some of it, binding proteins will come along and hold these open, uh, these strands open so that the enzyme that's going to add nucleotides to these, new, these old strands uh, can do its job. So those little BPs represent my binding proteins. There. Okay, so now we're going to move to this strand, and this strand is our, notice the three prime, it's our three prime to five prime side. And on this side, uh, DNA polymerase is going to come and attach. It knows to attach there because it's going to find an RNA sequence that was laid down by, by um, primerase. And uh, it's almost like bait for DNA polymerase. It knows where to go, it knows where to begin. So I'm going to go ahead and put DNA polymerase on board. So DNA polymerase is on board now, and uh, it's going to slide down the three prime to five prime side, reading the sequence on the parent strand and building the new strand five prime to three prime. So I'm going to go ahead and move DNA polymerase down and add the new strand. Okay, so this will get into focus here. Okay, so DNA polymerase slid down that three prime to five prime side, adding nucleotides one by one, pairing them properly. So I'm missing a little hydrogen bond there. Uh, and it's just going to keep going in this direction, sliding down the three prime side, building the five prime to three prime side. And it's going to keep continuing. It's going to chase helicase. As helicase unzips in this direction, DNA polymerase is going to build in this direction. So it happens continuously. So we say this is continuous synthesis, and uh, this is, he is building, DNA polymerase is building the leading strand. Okay. Why would DNA polymerase stop? If helicase can't go any further, if it's hit another bubble that's already open, 
um, or falls off the end of the strand. All right, let's look at the other side because it's not the same on both sides as we know. All right, so on this side, remember this is the five prime to three prime side. And we know the rule about DNA polymerase that it has to work three prime to five prime. So we can't start here and just go down continuously the way we did on the other side. We have to find three prime carbon and then work towards the five prime, uh, a carbon, uh, the end of the five primes. Okay, so let's see how that happens. Okay, so there's DNA polymerase sliding in the three prime to five prime direction, building the new daughter strand five prime to three prime. All right, so what happens when he gets to the end? Well, he's either gonna run into an area that isn't open yet, because helicase only unzips in one direction. We're only showing half of our replication bubble here. So he's either gonna run into an area that isn't open yet, or he's gonna fall off the end of the strand. Okay, so let's say that either one happens. If it stops, can't go any further, what does it, what does it do? What he does is DNA polymerase, <coughs> excuse me, jumps back, leaps back, I don't know how to describe it, he goes, he goes um, down the line and finds another three prime carbon and moves towards five prime again. Okay, so always sliding three prime to five prime. And he's gonna build this little strand right here. So I'll go ahead and build that. Okay, so my DNA polymerase went along here and built this new little segment here. He slid down the three prime to five prime side, that's where you see him, building five prime to three prime. Okay, complementing the bears appro the bases appropriately and um, created this next one. So then he gets to here and there's already a, already something there so he has to jump off and come back and start again. So you can see that we've built some fragments. We got this first fragment that that DNA polymerase built. He jumped off, came back, built this fragment right there. But they're not joined. These are called Okazaki fragments. And you can see that he didn't work continuously. He built a little bit, jumped off, built a little bit more. He's jumping off. He's going to go back here and build some more once helicase unzips. Okay, So it was a discontinuous synthesis. And you can imagine this takes a little bit longer of a time. So they call this the lagging strand. Uh, being built here. Okay, discontinuous synthesis of the lagging strand. All right, so we still have a problem here. We got to get those two joined together. That'll be done by an enzyme called ligase. So ligase is going to join those two together. And as we continue along here, and I'll finish it out, you can imagine that this side would be built continuously, just moving right along, building that side, and this side built in that, working in the three prime to five prime direction, building five prime to three prime, and then jumping back, building, jumping back, building, hope you're not getting motion sick. <laughs> and then eventually we're gonna end up with two, uh, two uh, molecules of DNA. Okay, let me go ahead and finish it up and get that for you. I want to show here is that we have made two strands. We've got the first strand made up of the old strand on the top and the new strand on the bottom. And then this one, new strand on top, old on new, old, <laughs> old strand on the bottom. And uh, so each strand is made up of old and new DNA that's semi-conservative conservative, uh, replication. Hope this uh, video will help you. If you have any questions, let me know.